they use transparent laser lasers. <laughs> Welcome to my messy studio. I am trying to still reach my 1,000 subscriber goal. If you find this information useful or just entertaining, I would appreciate a, a subscribe and, and or a like. Let's get on with the show. One of the best things that you can do to improve your artwork is to do master studies. What is a master study? It's doing artwork from someone who is considered a master and working directly from that piece. Why should you do one? It shows you how they use color, value, their materials, what their process is by sitting down and actually doing it, doing the work. You can compare your work, the work that you're creating with the work of a master and see how it falls. Are you wanting to improve your use of color or your use of value. This is a good practice to do for artists of all levels. You want to choose your master artist by what you want to learn. If you want to use color in a new way, if you, do you want to see how someone does a portrait, um, what, what techniques they use, what, what their color palette is perhaps. So what you want to do once you find that artist, and thank goodness we live in a digital age because you can go online and find reproductions of Rembrandts and just whatever master artist you want to use. What I like to do is to take my iPad and pull up the image on, on there and work with it next to me. Hopefully the, on the description of the, of the piece that you're wanting to work from, it will have what materials they use. Was it done in oil on canvas? Was it oil on paper? Was it a pastel? Whatever it is that they use, ideally you would use too if you're doing a, an actual master copy. Historically, you would go into the museum and be able to work directly with the actual master piece in front of you, which would be wonderful. <laughs> but that's not always so easy these days. You also want to look at what size they created the artwork in. Look at the ratio. Was it the four to three ratio, which is like a uh, the typical TV screen or monitor is set at? What are the measurements of the piece and how can you, if it's too large for you to work at that size, is there a way that you can use the same ratio with a smaller size. A good way to start your master study, no matter what the style the artist has created in, and I'm assuming it's gonna be two-dimensional, a two-dimensional master study, is look for the darkest and the lightest spots, examine the work closely, and see what the palette, palette was that they used. Can you mix your colors close to what the master used? The same color, the same tone, the same value, the same, an opaque paint. How did they, how did they achieve what they did that has drawn you in? Look at the composition that they used. You know, is it, is it symmetrical? If it's asymmetrical, how is it asymmetrical? How are things located in the composition? What draws your eye in? To the piece and then also make sure that you're working from large shapes to small shapes i do this as a regular practice and my favorite ones to do are sergeant and i'm getting ready to do a portrait of a young man with their pet snake and I'm drawing it out. I'm, I'm, I'm taking my time with this piece. There's no rush on it. Um, I'm more worried about the quality of the work than I am the speed at which it gets out. So, but it's been a while since I've done a portrait in oil paint. So I need to do, so I really need to do 
some studying and, and refresh my memory on how to get the right skin tones and how the brush works it should flow. I want it to be a loose piece, even though when you look at that, it looks like it's gonna be a really tight, tight piece. It's That's not gonna be my intention. My thought is the more information I can work out now, drawing wise, when I get the paints out, I'll, I can just be concerned about the paint, just the paint, just the colors, just how it's applied and not it is, is the face in proportion is, is this arm too short? You know, that type of thing. So that's what's got me started on thinking about master studies and I, and why I felt it was important to share that with you all. If it's something that you don't do, that you don't like to do, you know, I'm not the art police. I'm not going to come to your house. And But I personally find it very rewarding and useful and, and educational to do. So I've got a few examples that I can show you if this is something that you're interested in. And I'll go over to the overhead. What I like to do my studies in is this is the Stillman and Burn Epsilon series. This is good for sketches. The paper in these is not heavy enough to handle paint or uh, pastel very well. This is one that I did do in here and you can see the page is kind of warpy and it's not ideal. You can get ones like this on Amazon. Stillman and Burns carries one online. I believe it's the beta, but don't quote me. This is one I got off of, of Amazon and the paper in here works really well for this type of a thing. It's a lot heavier. Um, it's got some tooth to it. Let me show you some examples of some master studies to maybe get you thinking. This is one I did on a demonstration that I did on a live. This is a sergeant. The thing that I noticed about it was these lines through here and I did see this paper see that pink on there that came from some abstracts that I did on back there just the color seep through it's not the, yeah it's not the best but um, I really enjoyed these lines through here that I got to replicate and this I learned a lot from this this was the final one then I also did, I did some, this is a Rothko study that I did in September of 22. And I like to put notes at the bottom. So anything that I need to refer to back later, refer back to later. And we all know a Jackson Pollock. And there's quite a few different ones in here. Uh, these aren't studies, let's see. This is a, sand, a study from a Sandy Hester piece that I did. It is acrylic, I believe. I want to I need to mark that on there that that's what that is. And then this one, but this is the one I, I wanted to point out. This is a Fairfield Porter. Um, what I did was I looked up a number of his work online and I found ones that I found one that related to the landscapes that I, I wanted to do. So I wanted to replicate this bluish green color. And there's a lot of fields in this area that look like this. So that was my main main purpose of doing that. And then back here, I probably should do another one of these or something similar. This is a, a sergeant study that I did 
in again in September nope October October of 22 and this was this was an, an acrylic now the original that he did was in oil but I chose to do it in, in acrylic which is fine what I was mainly looking at on this sergeant was the colors that he's got in the, some of the flesh, that rosiness in the cheek and the, the shape of the eye and how it works. With this one, you, you know that one's there. Your mind fills in the, the blanks. I liked some of the brushwork and things that he did down here. His lost edges was another thing that I found interesting. Anyway, I enjoyed it. I need to do another sergeant, I think, before I do the portrait that I'm working on now. So on our next video, that's very well could be what it is, is me doing that. I think that's all I've got in here to show you. So thank you. Thank you for watching the video today. If you found it helpful or useful, if you could subscribe, that would be really great. And hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye all. Take care. Be safe.